35-year-old Joy Hibbs lived in Croydon, Pennsylvania in 1991. She was married to Charlie Hibbs. They had two children, Angie and David. On April 19, 1991, when 12-year-old David came home from school, he found the house ablaze. He ran for help, knowing that his mother was most likely inside. Firefighters found Joy's body in David's room. Initially, police believed she passed away in an accidental house fire. They found four gas burners on the kitchen stove that were turned on and ignited. When the autopsy was done, investigators determined that she was deceased before the fire was set. Police discovered what was later found to be a computer cord wrapped around Joy's upper torso. The autopsy determined she had been stabbed five times, strangled, and badly beaten. The autopsy also showed what would turn out to be an important detail. Joy Hibbs had smoked marijuana the morning of the fire. It'll make sense later on why this detail is important. Investigators quickly concluded the fire was set to destroy evidence of the crime. And authorities said it was largely successful, as much of the forensic evidence police would hope to find was destroyed. The fire marshal found four areas where the fire started, and in at least one spot accelerant was likely used. Without the forensic evidence, Bristol Township Police dug into Joy's life, creating a working timeline for when her life was taken and the arson. She left a paper trail showing her moves on the morning of the fire. She cashed her paycheck at a bank and went grocery shopping, which was her normal Friday routine. She then came home around 11 a.m., and a neighbor reported seeing her walking the family's new puppy named Major. Two people from the Ben Salem Baptist Church, where Joy attended Easter services, dropped by to talk about joining the congregation sometime after 11 a.m. They left before noon. It was shortly after 1 p.m. when David returned home from school to find the house on fire. Joy's wallet was later found in the cushions of the living room couch, but it was empty, though she had cashed her check hours earlier. Her purse was found on the kitchen floor, with its contents dumped out. This implied that robbery could be the motive, but it didn't quite make sense to investigators. Taking someone's life in such a vicious way and then set the house on fire for just a few hundred dollars. Police interviewed her employer, friends, neighbors, and family, but found that everyone who knew her seemed to love the mom that grew up the youngest of nine children in Central Florida. She camped, hiked, fished, grew vegetables, and loved making fried okra. Since many crimes of this nature are usually committed by the spouse, Charlie Hibbs was of course looked into. There was no sign of trouble in their marriage. Joy and Charlie were high school sweethearts. They celebrated their 18th wedding anniversary less than a week before her life was ended. Charlie also had a solid alibi. He was on a job site in Philadelphia, something co-workers confirmed. The only thing out of the ordinary that day was a dark colored Monte Carlo parked three feet from the curb near the Hibbs home. A neighbor who noticed the vehicle later reported it to police telling them it was unusual for a car to be parked directly in front of the Hibbs' home, which was at a T intersection. Robert Adkins soon became a suspect in the case. He sold marijuana occasionally to Joy. He owned a Chevy Monte Carlo. As you'll remember, Joy smoked marijuana on the morning of the fire. With a car similar to his seen in front of her house, this likely meant Atkins was at the scene around the time of the crime. Investigators learned that Joy and Atkins had argued over the quality of the drug he sold her, and Atkins refused to refund the money. While investigators believed it was possible that Atkins was involved, they couldn't prove it. The case made the rounds around Bristol Township police detectives over the years, until it was assigned to Bristol Township detective Michael Slaughter in 2014. He dug into the reports and re-interviewed investigating officers and witnesses from 1991. Slaughter also determined that Robert Atkins and his then-wife April were persons of interest. When Slaughter had shown up for a surprise interview with April Atkins in 2014, she told him that Bristol Township Police had never interviewed her about her ex-husband, despite his alibi that placed the couple together in the Poconos with their children the weekend of Joy's demise. April Adkins told Slaughter that she and her husband and children were in the Poconos that weekend, and when they returned, they heard about what happened to Joy. The Bristol Township detective interviewed Robert Adkins two days after he spoke with his ex-wife in 2014. During that interview, Robert Adkins admitted to being a confidential informant for Bristol Township Police Department at the time of the crime. 
and that he had been a methamphetamine user and got the drug for other people, though he didn't consider himself a dealer. He also admitted to the dispute over poor quality marijuana with Joy, but denied threatening her or her family. He just simply couldn't give Joy a refund, he told the detective. Adkins claimed he had left Bristol Township around noon the day of the fire for a weekend trip to the Poconos with his wife and children. He said he could provide an alibi too, telling Slaughter a lady, later described as a co-worker of his wife, could confirm his whereabouts in 1991. Adkins also said that Bristol Township police checked the hotel where he stayed at in the Poconos, and that cleared him further. More than a year later, in a December 2015 interview with Slaughter, former Chief Tom Mills confirmed that in 1991, Atkins was a confidential informant for the police purchasing methamphetamine and marijuana. Mills told Slaughter that he interviewed Atkins for the first time two days after the crime in 1991. When he was asked by a lieutenant to deliver a message to Atkins to contact police before his name came up in the investigation. Mills and Detective Al Eastlack, who was Atkinson's handler, went to Atkinson's apartment, but he wouldn't let them inside. Mills said he noticed a dark-colored 70s vintage Monte Carlo in the apartment complex parking lot. In 2016, April Adkins showed up at the Bristol Township Police Station on a Sunday. She wanted to tell Slaughter, whose business card she saved, what really happened the day Joy Hibbs lost her life. She said that day, her ex-husband showed up at the home covered in blood. He confessed he had stabbed someone and set the house on fire. He ordered her to call out of work and pack up their kids. The family fled to the Poconos for two days. April Atkins, who at the time shared a young child and baby with her husband, learned about Joy Hibbs only after the family returned, she told police. April Atkins said she didn't tell police what she knew when Slaughter first interviewed her in 2014 because she feared for her third and youngest child's safety because he lived with Robert Atkins at the time. Another five years would pass before Bucks County detectives would speak with Robert Atkinson's alleged alibi a former co-worker of April Atkins, who provided Robert Atkins with what authorities now say is a fake alibi. The woman told investigators in 2021 that police interviewed her in June of 1991, three days after Robert Atkins shared her contact information with them. The woman told police she called the Atkinsons home between 1 p.m. and 1.30 p.m. on April 19, 1991, and Robert Atkins answered the phone. In May of 2022, 56-year-old Robert Atkins was charged in connection to the case. He was arraigned by Judge Frank Parentu Sr. in Bristol and ordered to Bucks County Correctional Center without bail. The Bucks County District Attorney's Office held a news conference with DA Matt Weintraub saying it was a gratifying day when he could bring closure to the Hibbs family with an arrest. In a statement read on behalf of the family by Weintraub, Joy Hibbs was described as a sweet, charming Southern girl and a loving and devoted wife and mother. For 31 years, our family has been haunted by this tragic loss knowing, without a doubt, that Robert Atkins was the perpetrator, the statement read. Our family has waited 31 years for justice to prevail. Authorities continue to investigate, and anyone with information should contact either Detective Hanks at 215-348-6056 or Sergeant Slaughter at 215-785-785. 4040. On July 2nd, 1996, a man's body was found in a room at the Prince Murat Motel in Tallahassee, Florida. The man was 44-year-old James Bronner. An autopsy determined that he had been asphyxiated. James was a laborer who worked odd jobs around town. Investigators collected DNA belonging to the suspect from the crime scene. In 1996, DNA technology was not advanced enough to identify the suspect, so the case went cold. In 2020, Tallahassee Police Department detectives reopened the case and used new forensic technology to analyze the DNA found at the original crime scene. Investigative leads were developed with the help of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement and Parabon Nanolabs, a Virginia company that provides DNA phenotype services for police. Detectives eventually developed enough probable cause to arrest 71-year-old Alan Lefferts in connection to the case. His DNA matched the suspect's DNA found at the crime scene. Lefferts was picked up at his home in Jacksonville, Florida, with assistance from the Baker County Sheriff's Office. Tallahassee Police Department Deputy Chief Jason Larson said in a statement, 
Solving a case that occurred nearly 26 years ago speaks volumes to the dedication and great collaborative effort between our state and local law enforcement partners. Our detectives and forensic specialists work tirelessly every day to seek justice for victims and ensure those responsible for crimes are held accountable. We're hopeful this arrest will bring some level of closure to the victim's surviving loved ones. As Lefferts did not confess, we don't know why he took the life of James Bronner. Twenty-two-year-old Christopher Hervey lived in Santa Ana, California in 1996. His girlfriend, Jade Benning, lived with him and she was also 22 years old. At 3 a.m. on January 4th, 1996, Jade called 911. She said that a man broke into their apartment and fatally stabbed Christopher. According to her, she suffered a minor cut to her right hand when she struggled with the intruder. A witness also told police they saw a man running from the apartment building. Investigators discovered Christopher's body with multiple wounds to his chest. They couldn't find the weapon anywhere. Neighbors told police how they heard a loud argument taking place shortly before Christopher was stabbed, lasting for around 15 minutes. Investigators continued to work the case, but their leads went cold until an anonymous letter arrived in January 2020 that implicated Benning in the case. A cold case detective believed there to be enough after following up on the case and obtained a criminal complaint from the Orange County District Attorney's Office together with a warrant for Benning's arrest. 48-year-old Jade Manda Benning, who now lives in Austin, Texas, was arrested on May 3, 2022, near her home after an investigation that involved forensics. Agents from the U.S. Marshal's Lone Star Fugitive Task Force arrested her. Detectives from the Santa Ana Police Department were also present to witness Benning being apprehended. She had been extradited to California to face the charges and she is being held on a $1 million bail. We don't know exactly what led to the arrest, but we do know that evidence against her includes something police found when they executed search warrants in Austin, Texas in June 2020. Benning is currently in Orange County Jail. Her arraignment is scheduled for June 8, 2022.